uh, I want to come back to the mobiles for just a second because uh, they represent a very interesting uh, feature uh, to be introduced into the network that wasn't really there before. Uh, it has the property uh, that you carry uh, your information window around with you on your hip or in your purse. Um, and it's clearly not a, uh, a, just a phone. These are all programmable devices. They're all just sort of waiting for more downloads of uh, software to, to run new applications. Uh, we're very excited about these at Google. In fact, our excitement extended to the point where we actually implemented a new operating system called Android. We made it available. Uh, free of charge in source code form <laughs> the whole idea was to put a platform out there that people could treat uh, first of all we hope it's more secure than some of the others are but second it's intended to allow people to download new applications and to freely run them uh, so uh, that's all you know to the good I have to say though that uh, if you use your mobile to do anything uh, you're confronted with all of its various constraints and limitations. One thing that has occurred to me is that when you walk into a room like this, your mobile might become aware of devices like this high-res projection unit, uh, or you walk into a hotel room and there might be a web, uh, a web TV keyboard or something. It would be kind of nice if there were standards so that the mobile detected these devices and recognized there were other I.O. things available besides uh, the uh, mobile itself. And so those are the sorts of things that we might look forward to in time. The other thing which we can see at Google is that when people use their mobiles to interrogate the net, to do various searches, uh, they frequently ask questions related to where they are. So this means that geographically indexed information is becoming increasingly valuable. And so people who go to the trouble of associating geographical location with information can monetize that. Well, I sort of understood this intellectually, but I didn't really viscerally appreciate it until my family went on a holiday uh, in um, uh, it's Page, Arizona. There's a big lake called Lake Powell. And uh, we decided to go and rent a houseboat and go out on the lake. So while we were driving into this small town of Page, Arizona, someone pointed out that there weren't any grocery stores on the lake and that we had to buy all of our food before we launched the boat or we wouldn't have anything to eat. So that turned the conversation to uh, you know, uh, meals and you know, what did people want to cook. Somebody said, why don't we make paella while we're on the boat? And I thought that was a really good idea, but I didn't know where I could find uh, saffron. Where, where can I find saffron in Page, Arizona? So I got my Blackberry out and I was getting a good uh, data connection. So I went to the Google homepage and I typed saffron Page, Arizona grocery store. And I got back three responses with telephone numbers and little maps showing how to get to the store. I clicked on one of the phone numbers, the phone rang, the voice answers. And I said, may I speak to the spice department, please? Now, remember, this is a small store. It's probably the owner uh, of the store. I said, this is the spice department. I said, do you have any saffron? And he says, I don't know, but I'll go check. And he runs off. And he comes back, and he says, yes. So I follow the map. And I run into the store, and I buy $12.99 worth of saffron. And as I was walking out of the store, I realized what had just happened. Because in real time, as I needed it, I got exactly the information required to get that. 0 0.06 ounces of saffron. Uh, I didn't get the answer, you know, it's 1,500 miles away in New York City. And so I, it made me a real believer in uh, the utility and value of having good geographically indexed information, which allows you to localize uh, the kind of searching that you're doing. <clears throat>